The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The Word of God we want to consider today is the last portion of the story of the road to Emmaus story with Jesus with those two disciples from Luke chapter 24 verses 28 to 35. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, stay with us for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. They found the 11 and those with them assembled together and saying, it's true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. My dear friends in Christ, we've probably all done it more often than we'd like to admit, unless you're one of those totally sensible people who never does anything risky or that you might have regrets about later. And I'm not talking about doing anything illegal here. I'm talking about that you go out or maybe at home you make some really spicy Mexican food or Asian food. Or maybe you just end up eating too much because what you were eating just tasted so wonderful, so good, but then after you were done, you got a good piece, good case of heartburn. Afterwards, you're ending up saying, I can't believe I ate the whole thing. You get heartburn, you have to pull out the antacid tablets to get some relief. You say to yourself, why did I do this to me myself? Why did I do this when I knew that I was going to end up having these problems later on? Well, today's reading, as I mentioned, it's the conclusion of the Road to Emmaus story with Jesus and those two disciples. That story has those two disciples telling us that they got a, a good heartburn. And they didn't need antacid tablets because it was a good heartburn that they had. And actually, what happened to them is they got the relief that they really needed. The two disciples had left Jerusalem and, and they didn't have a heartburn problem. As I said, what really they had was totally broken hearts totally broken hearts. They, they had hoped that Jesus was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And they had their false ideas about what that mean, but meant. But with the crucifixion, their hopes totally dashed, totally gone. And then, unbeknownst to them, as they're walking that seven-mile trek to Emmaus, Jesus showed up there with them, they didn't know him, and began talking with them. And he gave them this couple hour Bible information class, as I mentioned. And with that Bible information class, well, their broken hearts were mended. And they got this good heartburn. And well, when they got to Emmaus, they didn't want Jesus to leave them. They wanted him to stay. They wanted him to, to say more so that their hearts would burn a little bit more. They wanted him to eat with them. Our reading says, 
When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Oh, in the excitement of everything that was going on, Jesus didn't forget his usual custom, and that was that before he would eat, he would always say his prayers, thanking the Father for the food that was there in front of him, thanking him for God's gift. And, and this gives us a good lesson for us to learn. Well, as the, was the custom of the day, what happened is that Jesus broke the bread that wasn't sliced and put on a plate, but he broke the bread and, and then passed that around. And this wasn't the Lord's Supper. And Jesus wasn't going to stick around long enough for them to have the Lord's Supper. This was just them having their meal together. And, and our text says, Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. For all this time, Jesus had hidden his identity from them. But now, all of a sudden, it's as plain as day who he was. He was the Savior. He was Jesus. He was the one that they had listened to, well, during the course of his ministry. And now, how did he reveal himself? Was it that when he handed the bread to them, that then they saw the nail marks in his hands? Oh, we don't know how he revealed himself, but he did reveal himself, and they knew for a fact who he was. He, he remained for a moment, and then he disappeared. Now it all made sense to them. They said, We're not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us. Their hearts and their souls were were on fire as the Holy Spirit worked through Jesus' words to get them to understand that, yes, Jesus had redeemed Israel. God's word worked on that, their hearts, that word of God that's sharper than any double-edged sword. It reached their hearts and it gave them this good heartburn. It told them that, yeah, he had redeemed Israel. And the real problem that they were dealing with wasn't the fact that the Romans were over the Israelite nation. The real problem that they were dealing with was the problem of their sin. And Jesus, with his life and death, what he had done is he had paid for their sins and he had established the real spiritual Israel. He had redeemed Israel. And he had established that kingdom that began with that burning in their hearts. That burning in their hearts when, well, they saw from what Jesus said that they were sinners and that they deserved eternal punishment. But, but then what really made their hearts burn and burn with joy was knowing that Jesus had paid for all of those sins that he had established that kingdom that began in their hearts, a kingdom that would last forever in heaven. Being a part of Christ's eternal kingdom in heaven, that's what gave them such joy that evening. Well, after Jesus vanished, those two disciples headed back to Jerusalem, and you have to believe that that their trip back to Jerusalem was a whole lot quicker than their trip to, their leisurely trip to Emmaus with Jesus and hearing that Bible information class. They just had to share their good heartburn. They had the best news ever. And well, now if you think about it, it's really going to be some great news when we hear about a cure or a vaccine for this virus, but but here, those two disciples, they heard the best news ever. The best news ever. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. That's the best news ever. Now, I'm not saying that you should do it. But the next time you go out or prepare yourself some extra spicy Mexican food or Asian food 
or maybe you just eat a little bit too much and you end up getting a good case of heartburn and actually that would be a bad case, wouldn't it? Well, then think of the good heartburn that affected those two disciples and that can also and does also affect you and me when we hear that best news ever. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. You are forgiven because of Jesus. You are a child of God because of Jesus. And you are going to heaven forever. All because of Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, when we think about those two disciples, when they said, were not our hearts burning within us, well, give us that same wonderful experience every time we hear the word of God, when that word, well, when it does show us that we're sinners, that we deserve your wrath and punishment, but then when your word also tells us that Jesus took care of that for us. He paid what we deserve to have paid. He died on the cross. He paid for our sins. He won for us heaven. Oh, this is the best news ever. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Lord God, in, in your grace and mercy, continue to deal with us according to your will. Oh, Grant us soon a, a cure, a vaccine for this virus. Help us to get back to our normal lives so that, we can, so that we can gather together like we're used to, so that we can hear the word of God, so that together we can have this wonderful, good heartburn, knowing we are children of God, we are forgiven, we are heirs of heaven. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. And I just remind you one more time, we've looked at the story of the Emmaus disciples three times. This is the third time I'll say if you want a DVD that gives a good picture pre prepared by our synod to think about that Road to Emmaus story, please let me know. Be happy to give you a copy, and if you know somebody else that could benefit from it, well, let me know, and I'll be happy to give you a copy for them too. Well, the Lord bless and keep you always. Amen.